This show is clean. Happy Halloween. Pretty much. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 773. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Today, the return of the much loved feature, Matthews News, with some interesting recent stories. Plus, we'll hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, John Deere the Engineer, and the oil companies are on a spending spree now that gas prices are so low. Mike's Daily Podcast. That doesn't make sense. Don't you think they'd be sad and full of woe? Mike's Daily Podcast. Um, I don't know. We'll find out in just a little bit on this show. On the last one, Valentino and Bison Bentley. Oh, they said they were just actors. And not really who we thought they were. And then things happen. Weird. I bought a purse. And I said, oh, this doesn't match my outfit. Mike's Daily Podcast. No, it's true. I used to walk around for many years with a man purse on. Mike's and it did Daily didn't make me podcast question my yeah. sexuality. But yeah, I, I, I walked around, my ex-wife got me one, and I'm like, oh, this is cool, I can put stuff in it. Look who just walked in. Hi, Mike Matthews, I know what word you were going to say, and I'm like, so mad at you. I, well, I refrain. That's good, Mike Matthews. You, sh- you bleeped yourself on yesterday, so. I did, I, I had to bleep. But yeah, I had a man purse for a while, I don't anymore, and I, I will say... My hats off to the women of the world that wear purses because it hurts your back. It does bad things to your. I had big back problems when I walked around with a man purse, but th- th- I really don't understand why I had one. I mean, I-, I put a bunch of magazines and periodicals in it so that I would never be bored. Oh wait, I was married. That's right, and that required going to the mall. And having to sit there and wait for my ex-wife to come out of shopping centers. So I'd sit at the nice couches that they have in most malls. And she now, after we've divorced, I find out she doesn't like to go to malls anymore. So there's that great irony and disappointment. Mike Matthews, don't be full of disappointment. There's like no reason to be full of disappointment in your life. You should be happy and walking around and just be yourself. You're right. And no man purses. Yeah, because you look stupid with them on. That's true. Thank you for that assessment. Look, let's just walk in there. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, I just wanted to tell you that I had nothing to say. Oh, good. Yeah, the, the, you found out. Yeah, yesterday's show, Valentino, Bison, Bentley, they're just actors. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I always thought they were posers. Not like me, I actually am a floorman! And that's... is it? Did you get that voice from all the ammonia for, that you put in the mop, mop bucket? Mop bucket? Yeah. Did you develop that speaking problem because your brain is small? Probably. Like, small brain size does not have to do with how poorly you speak. Okay, that's good to know. Hey, here's another interesting factoid. That, you know, gas prices are just falling. What's the opposite of going through the roof? Going through the floor. And according to Reuters.com, the recent slide in crude oil prices has not affected Exxon Mobil Corporation's plans to spend a little less than $37 billion over the next several years. This was announced today but, yay let's hear it for today which is Halloween and I'm glad you guys all showed up in costume no we didn't yeah I'm like we forgot Mike Matthews I can get some costumes from the gift shop for everybody so that will look all spooky why don't you just randomly pick some costumes and we'll put them on and, and we'll tell everyone what we're dressed as at the end of the show that sounds really exciting in a sad sort of way. In a what sort of way? Sod. Sod? Yes, Mike Matthews. Good. 
go get go get the costumes, please. I'll do what I want. You're right. Yeah, so Jeff Woodbury, uh, the head of Exxon Investor Relations, said, Our guidance is no different. Okay. And uh, the company plans to spend just shy of $37 billion from the years 2015 to 2017. And they are spending... Their spending peaked, actually, at $42.5 billion last year. Okay, what are they going to spend it on? Reuters isn't telling us. But I'm sure it's on political elections? Lobbying? Or maybe building more fracking? Possibly. Maybe to build a huge transmitter to speak with aliens? Maybe to build a better mousetrap? I don't know. Mike, you're rambling. Sorry. Yeah, so what do you think about this whole thing with uh, Exxon doing that? Oh, and what do you think about this? This is interesting. Today I'm walking Basil the Boxer. Uh, I need to get the requisite Basil the Boxer barking sound. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, yeah, we were walking and we we're near the Castro, I mean, Pod Castro Valley Bart. And I saw a bunch of Giants fans walking over to the BART because the parade is actually happening as of this recording in less than an hour in San Francisco. They're going up Market Street from the Embarcadero to the Civic Center to celebrate their win of the World Series. And I have to say, and I mentioned this in the blog at mikesdillypodcast.com, I don't follow baseball. And I'm not going to be a Johnny come lately going, yay, yay for this team that is so close to where I live. Oh, yay. But I will say that the Giants fans that were heading to BART were extremely nice. Just nice, jolly, jovial people. Possibly they're happy because their team won. But they're just nice. And I, you know what? The, I think the fans, the fans are what draw me into a team. If they're nice and cool... Then I'll, I'll want to be. If they're scary and they don't, you know, welcome outsiders, then I don't want to be part of that team. But then again, I would not want to be a part of a club that would accept me as a member. Thank you, Groucho Marx. What do you think about all that? Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email on the podcast. And uh, actually, you can also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. There is also at mikesdailypodcast.com, the website, all kinds of things, including links to where to listen to the show in iTunes. And if you comment and uh, rate the show, that helps our ranking so more people find out about us in iTunes. Also, there's a link to where to find us on Facebook, like the Facebook page. And when I post a new show, share that with your friends and more people will find out about us too. It's great. There's also where to find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Speaker, MixCloud, Podomatic, Yelp, Tumblr, and Twitter. All there at mikesdailypodcast.com, as well as the link to where to buy cool stuff on Amazon. If you want to help out the show, just go to that Amazon link there on the left-hand side of the page. Click on that and buy whatever it was you're going to buy on Amazon, and that helps out the show. So do that at mikesdailypodcast.com. You can also catch the blog, all the daily podcast pictures, and all my past interviews there, too. Matthew's News. we got some interesting news stories here. That I, Mike Matthews, am bringing to you Matthews News And these news stories have to do With our society today On the first day of school Students may be seated in alphabetical order But over time seating arrangements May change as the teacher quickly Learns who is friends with whom Which students tend to be disruptive which may need extra motivation and which may need to hone their concentration skills. Many teachers find that seating charts make it easier to manage a classroom and facilitate the learning process. But a seating assignment that makes things easier on a teacher does not always benefit the student. A 2007 study at Hanover College found a classroom seating arrangement can affect the level of interaction between teacher and student, which may impact test scores and learning potential, according to Half Moon Bay Magazine. 
In general, as students sit further away from the action zone, the center and the front rows, participation declines and absenteeism increases. Various older studies referenced in the Hanover College material illustrated that the distance between a student's seat and the teacher affected test scores. Researchers at Montana State University found seating charts to be very effective in terms of the comfort, confidence, and effectiveness of the teacher. But researchers discovered that teachers were more likely to feel unhappy and uncomfortable in classrooms in which students clo- uh, chose their own seats. But the right seating arrangement can benefit students. Uh, the arranged seating did not have an adverse effect on the high ability students. But some students prefer to sit where they feel most comfortable. Comfort may play a role in classroom performance and assisting with the student's ability to maintain their focus. But students who choose their their own seats to be close to chatty friends or stare out the window are doing themselves a disservice. Attack of the killer tomatoes. Attack of the killer tomatoes. Well, it's not an attack of the killer tomatoes, but it's an attack of invasive plant species. This is also from Half Moon Bay magazine. Mexican feather grass, an alluring plant with its delicate fountain-like cascading stalks, recently topped a list of invasive plants in California maintained by Plant Right, an organization that promotes non-invasive plants for the state. The tens of thousands of seeds that this plant produces are dispersed by the wind, water, through animal droppings, or even on cars. The seed bank of this invader can persist for years and crowds out native as well as pasture grasses in coastal landscapes, urban and agricultural areas, forests, land disrupted for reasons of con- construction and therefore vulnerable also shrubland and the mexican feather grass reseeds itself and gets quickly established with deep roots it is also indigestible to cattle st john's wart plants bunch together and shut sunlight away from anything growing beneath them Pampas grass, native to South America, thrives in disturbed lands where it aggressively crowds out native neighbors. Other familiar plants on the list of invaders include ice plant, which is native to South Africa, bristly ox bristly ox tongue native to Europe and North Africa the slender false brome present in woodside and south coast areas and rated a class A noxious weed it is found around the coast particularly in areas disturbed by construction often the spread of invasive species is beyond human control such as the dispersing of seeds by wind water or unwitting animals or even human transporters or they are spread unknowingly by nurseries catering to home or commercial gardeners with the result of impacting habitats perhaps far different from those where they originally evolved. 48% of invasive plants in the state of California originated as ornamental garden plants. Mounting a counteroffensive against invasive plants is something anyone can do. The lay gardener has means at hand to get rid of weeds that don't belong. There are mechanical means such as simply pulling or uprooting, especially when the invasion is freshly begun. The procedure is to start from the outside and force the invader into a smaller and smaller space. But the industrial garden by hand farmer may run into trouble with the cape ivy and giant reed ivy both of which have pervasive root structure and the ability to reroot from fragments. There are biological means such as insects or living beings that can outconsume the invasive pest. Bringing in a herd of goats to happily devour the pests is another great idea. Perhaps just as effective are efforts currently being undertaken to inform and educate the public. And I find the Mexican feather grass to be very cool. And in fact, some started growing in my front yard and I was like, yeah, I ain't cutting this down. And it's gotten bigger and bigger. And I guess I've irritated these plant people by doing that. Oh, well. 
Google is going to provide a free ride, a free shuttle to the city of Mountain View at no cost to either residents or the city. The free community shuttle is going to run throughout the city roughly every 30 minutes from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. On weekends and holidays, the shuttle will run every hour from noon to 8. There will be four electric shuttles to start the two-year pilot program. Each shuttle will seat up to 16 and will be accessible to those with wheelchairs. Although the Mountain View-based Google 